Disney 101 Dalmatians Disney 101 Dalmatians Roger Radcliffe was a musician. He lived in a little flat in London with Pongo, his pet Dalmatian dog. One day, Roger got married. His lovely new wife was called Anita, and she had a beautiful lady Dalmatian called Padita. Soon, Padita was expecting her first little of puppies. Life seemed perfect until one day, an old friend of Anita's, Cruella Devil, came to visit. Padita and Pongo were frightened of her. Where are the puppies? Cruella demanded. They are not expected for another three weeks, Anita replied. You must let me know when they arrive. I just adore Dalmatian puppies. Their coats are so beautiful. And with that, Cruella swept out of the house in a flurry. Three weeks later, Padita and Pongo became the proud parents of 15 puppies. Roger, Anita, and Nani, the housekeeper, were delighted. The very next day, Cruella returned. Fifteen puppies, she cried excitedly. I'll buy all of them. Oh, no, you won't, said the Roger. They are not for sale. You fools, you'll be sorry, Cruella cried, storming out of the house. One night soon after, Cruella's henchmen, Horace and Jasper Baden, lay in wait to dog up the puppies. They sat in their van and waited for Roger and Anita to take Padita and Pongo for their evening walk. Once the coast was clear, the Badens forced their way into the house. When Nanny tried to stop them, the Badens locked her in a broom cupboard. By the time Nanny managed to escape, the Badens were gone and so were the puppies. The police immediately launched an investigation, but as the days went by, the puppies were still not found. At last, Pongo said to Patita, the humans aren't getting anywhere. We'll have to find the puppies ourselves. Pongo decided to try the twilight bark. This was the quick, quickest way for dogs to send an receive news across the country. That evening, when the two Dalmatians were taken for their walk, Pongo barked the alert. Three loud barks in the hall from the top of Primrose Hill. After a moment, an answering back was heard. It's the Great Dane at Hampstead, Pongo said to Padita, and he barked out his message. Danny the Great Dane was very surprised by the message. Fifteen Dalmatian puppies have been stolen, he told a terrier friend. The humans haven't been able to find them, so it's up to us to send out an old dog alert with the twilight bug. Danny's big deep voice began to send news all over London. Two mongrels heard the alert. One said, I think we should let the rest of the country know. And so, within the hour, the hour word had spread north, south, east and west all over England. Before too long, the twilight bug reached an old sheepdog called Colonel, who lived on a farm. Colonel's friends, a horse named Captain and a cat named Tibbs, listened to. They were all very surprised to hear that 15 puppies had been stolen. That's funny, Tibbs said to Captain Colonel. I heard puppies barking over at the old 
Devil house last night, but no one lived. No one lives there now," said the colonel. "We must go and see what's going on." So Colonel and Tibbs went quietly up to the house and peered through a broken window. Inside the house, Horace and Jasper Baden were eating supper and relaxing in front of the television. All round the room, there were puppies. Not fifteen, nor even fifty, but ninety-nine of them. Colonel quickly returned to Captain's stable and loudly barked the good news. Within no time at all, the twilight bark sent the message all the way back to London that the puppies had been found. It finally reached the ears of Padita and Pongo. They set off across. The snowy countryside, as fast as they could, to rescue their puppies. Meanwhile, Sergeant Tibbs was keeping watch on the house. When he saw Cruella drive up to the front door, he went to the broken window to hear what was happening. Cruella was ordering the Badins to kill the puppies. "I want their skins for her fur coats," she cried. I'll be back first thing in the morning, and with that, more with that warning, she left. Tibbs was horrified. Fur coats from puppy skins! What a terrible thought! There wasn't a moment to lose. As soon as the buttons began watching television again, Tibbs crept through the broken window and whispered to the nearest puppy, "Tell everyone." They must escape. Cruella is after you. Are caught. When all the puppies had been alerted, Tibbs led them out of the room and up the stairs to find a hiding place. As soon as the patterns discovered that the puppies had gone, they searched all over the house and eventually headed up the stairs. The puppies were cowering in a corner of a bedroom. Tibbs was in front, ready to protect them from the badins. Meanwhile, Colonel had met up with Padita and Pongo, and led them to the Devil House. They arrived just in the nick of time and quickly bounded into action. Padita attacked Horace Badin, while Pongo tore at Jasper Badin's trousers. Under cover of the fight, Tibbs led. The puppies out of the house to the safety of Captain's stable, leaving the buttons in a heap on the floor. Padita and Pongo dashed after the puppies. Are our fifteen all here? Asked Padita anxiously. You have fifteen and a few more, replied the captain. There are ninety-nine. Ninety-nine? Said the Pongo, astonished. Whatever did Cruella want with ninety-nine puppies? There was silence for a moment. Then one little puppy said, "She was going to make fur coats out of us." Padita and Pongo looked at each other in horror. They had never heard of anything so evil. We'll just have to take them all back to London with us," said Padita. "I'm sure Roger and Anita will look after them." Padita, Pongo, and the puppies set off back to London, leaving a trail of paw prints in the snow. Cruella, who had returned for the puppies' coats, quickly spotted the paw prints, and the chase began. Eventually, after trudging across the countryside, Padita and Pongo led the tired puppies to the shelter of a blacksmith's shop. Cruella and the Badins were still on their trail. Suddenly, Pongo had an idea. He made the puppies roll in some suit until they all looked like black Labrador. Under the cover of their disguise, the puppies climbed into a van that was going to London. But falling snowflakes began to wash away the suit. Cruella saw white patches appearing on the puppies' coats and realized that she had been tricked. After them, she shouted, the, shouted to the buttons. Pongo just had time to 
leap on to the tail board as the van sped off, with Cruella and the buttons right behind. Cruella was determined to force the van off the road, but as Sippy banged into the side of it, Harker skidded out of control and hurtled down a steep hill into a snow drift. Then the buttons van crashed into the back of Cruella's car, and they all ended up in a large pile of wreckage. Back in London and home at last, Roger, Anita, and Nanny hacked the tired puppies. Then Nanny said, Have you noticed that there seems to be a lot more of them? Roger started to count. Thirteen, sixty-two, ninety-four, and five over there. That's a hundred and one Dalmatians counting Padita and Pongo. Whatever are we going to do with them all? asked Anita. Why, keep them, of course, said Roger. We'll buy a big house and have a Dalmatian plantation. And that's exactly what they did.